Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Mike Beer of the DRF.com. Formulator race of the day for Sunday, July the 23rd, race number 10 at Saratoga. Grade one action for three-year-old fillies going a mile and an eighth. Let's take a look at the field for the coaching club, American Oaks. Head on over to the race of the day event page on DRF.com, download free Formulator past performances and handicap along with us as we take this field in post position order. I wanna talk about the number one, a late Mike Beer. This filly began her career with a lot of hype Mm. She won her debut by the length of the stretch. It took a while for her to get back to the winner's <laughs> circle. And I guess what, what you know, the, the the cure for what ailed her was a four-horse field at Delaware. Yeah, I mean, that's true. It's hard to want to get too excited about it. I mean, I personally was just happy to see her get back and, and run another good race, um, pair up that debut buyer uh, of 88. I know it was only against three other horses. She's got a perfect trip. They went slow pace. She was just way better than those horses. But I still, I like that she finally won again. And I... It's just you, know, you see those four races in the middle of her of her card, and you're like, I guess she's just not that good. She never really panned out. Aside from the Ashton, I don't know what happened. I mean, it's not like she ran terribly in all of those races. I can make excuses for some of them. I st I still have high hopes for this filly. Two of the horses she beat last time out have already come back to win. She draws inside. I have a feeling this distance is going to be just fine for her. I agree. And we'll see. She just has to step it up a little bit from a buyer standpoint. But Bill Mott has always been very high on the number one of late. The number two, Abel Tasman, is the best three-year-old filly in the country right now. It's Bob Baffert and Mike Smith. You haven't been able to stop them in any major race in 2017. Abel Tasman's pulled off a big double already. The Kentucky yeah. Oaks, the Acorn, Smith gave her a great ride in the Acorn. I thought she, he did. He did. He gave her a great ride. And it maybe made the difference as well. Um, I still think she ran great in the Acorn. She ran really well in the Kentucky Oaks too. She had a lot of things go her way in the Kentucky Oaks with a big fast pace in front of her and the clean run on the outside. Um, but she still ran well that day and she ran even better last time. Um, she's the horse to beat in here, Dan. I wanted to pick against her. I thought long and hard about picking against her. I ultimately put her on top in the race. Um, but I will be very interested to see if um, these horses, you know, June 10th at Belmont Park was Bob Baffert Day. They all showed up. They all looked like they could win. None of them necessarily looked like they were going to win by the length of the stretch with huge figures, which is what they all did. I'm interested to see if they all can come back and back those up. I guess West Coast has already kind of done it. Yeah, he we'll did see, it a little We'll see south. if she can do it. Let's see what the Timeform U.S. pace projector has in store. As you see by that blue bar, we are not expecting a fast pace. As you see by the number two at the back of the pack, mm. that puts Abel Tasman perhaps behind the eight ball. Now, she's good enough perhaps to overcome it, but yeah. if you give Salty five lengths with this scenario, can Abel Tasman run her down? I don't know. Maybe. I first of all, I don't think that I don't think Abel Tasman has to be compromised by a slow pace. And they may not be walking in here anyway. I don't think she'll necessarily has to be compromised. You know, the thing about the Acorn last time is that wasn't a fast pace. They did not go fast in that race, and she was last, and she made a huge run just to catch up. And she kept it going through the stretch. Another filly that could be compromised if the pace is slow is the three, Daddy's Little Darling, yeah. because she has no speed yeah. whatsoever. They tried her on turf, and you know something? I think eventually that's going to be her surface. Mm -hmm. Even though she's made the bulk of her money thus far on dirt, a graded stakes winner on dirt, multiple uh, a grade one, multiple grade one yeah. placed. Uh, I thought she was fine in the Belmont Oaks. Uh, I wonder how much improvement is left right. after 10 lifetime starts, and I wonder if she's going to get paid. She's a perfectly likable filly, yeah. maybe a minor award. Yeah, I agree. You know what? She's a really good horse. She does, she compromises herself with her running style, and unlike Abel Tasman, who I'm just, I guess I'm just not that worried about the pace with Abel Tasman, I'd be worried about the lack of pace with her. Now, Corporate Queen tried turf last time out, and I don't think that's going to be her surface, but two starts back in the Black Eyed Susan, she fell a country mile behind in excruciating of fast pace. Yeah. It burned out all the pace setters. Actress came from behind. Lights of Medina came yeah. from behind. And Corporate Queen came from left field. Uh, I thought it was a good, solid performance. Actress came back to run third in the Delaware Oaks with a 90 buyer speed figure. But she just looks a little bit overmatched from a speed uh, figure standpoint. She, yeah, she really does. Yeah, that Black Eyed Susan, which is so far, I guess, kind of like the best race she's run, that was the kind of race where you wanted to get outrun and then come with a, a big late finish in there. She looks like she's in too tough here. Summer Luck, another horse going turf to dirt. One of three in here for trainer Mark Cassie. In the regret last time out, no match for sweeping Patty. But you know something? She was kind of close to a very fast yeah. pace that day, and she hung on rather well. Uh, the Black Eyed Susan, I won't hold that race against her. The Ashland, not a lot of pace for her to run at. Mm -hmm. She's run some okay races. I'm just not really sure she's a mile and an eighth filly. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what she is. I was actually... 
I actually didn't really under, I didn't get, I guess, the switch to turf last time, because I didn't really see a ton of pedigree for it. She actually ran really well last time. I, I wonder if they might not want to give her another chance on that service. I think she's fine on dirt. I don't think she's as good as these horses. Burned has run her two fastest races as a three-year-old, but didn't do much last time out in the Delaware Oaks, just sort of an even performance. Yeah. Graham Motion keeps the face, Faith looking for a valuable grade one placing. She's an okay filly. She's very lightly raced, though. Only a couple of starts this year. She could go forward. She has to go way forward to last. Salty is one for one around two turns on a fast track. She won the Gulfstream Park Oaks rather easily. The Kentucky Oaks, I thought she ran just fine, yes, beaten four lengths in the Acorn, while Abel Tasman shot on through th along the inside. Salty probably was four wide on yeah. the turn. I think the ground loss made at least a little bit of a mm -hmm. difference in that race. I think, and I agree with the pace projector, that Salty's going to get the jump on Abel Tasman here. I think she'll slightly be a better price. What's yeah. the knock on this horse? Do you not, not believe one. the Acorn? No, there's not a knock on her at all. Um, I, it, listen, you and I, I think, both like to look at races from a trip perspective and sort of try and compare horses yeah. that way. If you're going to do that for her last two starts, I don't know. I mean, she got two, you know, ones where you could sort of say, well, she didn't get the best of it. In both times, you could say, well, the Abel Tasman might have got the best of it. So there is that way to compare these two horses. I still ultimately, at the end of the day, and I like Salty as a horse a lot. I kind of feel like Abel Tasman just might be better than her, but I guess we'll find out more on Sunday. Well, let's take a look at our top picks for Sunday's race of the day, the Grade 1 Coaching Club American Oaks. You're going with Abel Tasman to uh, add yet another Grade 1 win to a sparkling resume. I'll take Salty to turn the tables on Abel Tasman. She's 5-2 to two on the morning line. Abel Tasman, 8-5, to 7-2 for me. Mike's going with the 2. Abel Tasman, 2-1-7 two, one, two, one, seven yeah. in the Grade 1 Coaching Club. If you are betting the Saratoga Sunday card from home, please sign up to DRF bets. When you do, you will access a $300 cash bonus. You will have access to 10% win place takeout on 10 select tracks all summer long. And all you have to do is head over to DRF.com slash take 10. Approximate post time for the Grade 1 Coaching Club American Oaks, the 10th at the spa on Sunday, 618 Eastern. Good luck.